This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my fans, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Hey, we've all been there, right? Standing on the red carpet, waiting to get into that hot new nightclub, hoping the bouncers will let you in as everyone else is getting in and you're waiting in line because you don't know anybody. But when you finally do get in and that disco ball is turning, you're having fun, it was all worth it, right? Today we're trying to get into the club, but we are animals. Today we're looking at Beastie Bar, New Beasts in Town. This is a sequel to Beastie Bar. Uh, it's for two to four players. It's a tactical card game that takes about 20 minutes to play. Uh, and this is a sequel, not an expansion. It is a standalone game that you can play by itself or add to the original Beastie Bar. Let me show you. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to draw a pile of cards of a different color. Each pile has the same exact 12 cards in it. Nothing's different but the colors. Over the course of the game, cards are going to be lined up in between these two sections. This is the alleyway called the That's It. You're getting bounced. And this is Heaven's Gate. This is the club you're trying to get into and that you're trying to stand in line for. And cards are going to be placed in between these up until there's five of them. Now each player will take their deck of cards, they'll flip it over, they'll shuffle it up, and then they will draw the top four cards in the hand that they'll look at, and then they'll play one of those cards in turn order. Now as cards are played, they activate special abilities, but remember everybody has the same pile of cards. For example, and again the numbers go from 1 to 12, we have the cheetah who's number 9. It would be placed right next to the door, they're the first one lining up. What the cheetah does is they can eat the smallest uh, numbered animal and replace it. So if there was a small animal, it would go in that slot and that animal would get bounced out of the club to the that's it alley that I showed you earlier. Well, let's say the next player plays the dog. What the dog does, puts everything in order from smallest to highest. So the dog would actually just move right up in front of the cheetah. If you play a lion, the lion gets to jump over the card in front of it and eat the card on the other side if it's less than 10. So this card would eat the dog and this would now be in first place and these cards, when they get removed, they go face up on the That's It card. They're out of the club. Now you notice this one has a little swirly on it. Th about two or three of the cards have these. This means it's recurring. That it happens at the end of every round. So if this guy was placed way in the back, he might end up jumping round for round to the front of the line. This player then plays the Rhino. The Rhino takes, take, takes the place of the strongest current animal. The animal could be another Rhino. So he's going to take out the Tiger and take him out and he's booted out. Blue's got quite a stronghold here in line at the front. Red plays a bat. The bat can basically shoo away any player, so any card, so it shoes away that one. But if it shooed away and ended up in the front, it automatically just gets scared and flies away to the out of the, uh, into the that's it card. The next player plays the porcupine. This is sort of a defensive card and it happens pretty much every round. If a card higher than the porcupine, eight through 10, uh, was trying to replace it and kick it into the that's it, well, the, the person that was trying to do that gets booted as well because of his quills. Now the blue player is going to play a vulture. This is pretty interesting. The vultures never go in. They actually are going to get knocked out. But what they do is they take the top card here, which in this case is my own, puts it back in and reactivates it. So they're going to reactivate the cheetah. And so that cheetah is going to eat the weakest animal, which is the bat, and puts it there. Now, if when you place this vulture out by the end, there was another vulture on top, both of those vultures would actually enter the club. The next one plays a llama. The llama spits at the one next to it. If it's less than an eight, this player runs to the back of the line, and this is gonna happen at the end of every single round because it's recurring. Here's one of my favorite combinations. The green player is going to play the penguin. The penguin, you have to flash a card that's in your hand, and then the penguin becomes that player for this one round. So that player is gonna flash the peacock. What the peacock gets to do is jump in front of the strongest animal and show him his peacock, which is really funny. So now this guy's gonna jump all the way in front and the peacock's a good way to get your guys in. The peacock, you just show them that you have it and you put it back in your hand. And after this round, the penguin just becomes a five penguin like normal. But now there's five cards in the line. Anytime there's exactly five cards, we stop and we score. The closest two get in. The last one gets kicked out and the rest slide up. And let's say the blue player plays a bear. The bear drags the two smallest numbered cards, all of the ones that are two smallest numbers, to the back of the line, and then gets in front of those guys. And the last card I haven't showed you is the ostrich. The ostrich will run in front of all even, 
or all odd as far as they can go. So for example, let's just say it was like this and you played the ostrich and you say odd, it will run in front of all of the odd ones and now it's up in front or you can pick even. That's how all the cards work. Once everyone's played all their cards, you count one point for each of the cards that you got in there. The one who has the most is the winner. If it's a tie, you would look at the type of uh, animal that you got in and you would get either two, three, or four points depending on it. And the winner then is the winner. You can also use the sheet to play in an advanced variant way. Here's all 12 uh, animals. What you can do is you take and throw out any four that you choose out of there. So you have eight cards and you've decided which ones they are. And then if you get those animals in, you get a certain amount of points. So you can try to combo certain ones together. You can go for all the ones that are really hard to get in, but get you a ton of points or get you ones that are easy to get in, but don't to give you a lot of points or any mix of those. Now, speaking of choosing and mixing, this is the game we're reviewing here today. It's a sequel standalone version of the original Beastie Bar. If you have both, you can mix these together. How that would work is you would do the same thing. You would choose any eight cards, but you can only have one of each number. So you might take the one from this one and the two from this one. Because the numbers on each set kind of do similar things, but they're slightly different, uh, you might find it a lot of fun to mix these sets together and have the most variability possible. Now I reviewed Beastie Bar a while ago and I really enjoyed that game and I also really enjoyed this. Which one's better? I think they're both about the same. I heard that this one was a little more complicated in the moves, but after playing both of them back to back, both sets have one or two characters that's a little bit more complicated than the rest, but it's okay. They're both about the same complexity. It's really just going to come down to which one do you have available to you. Uh, if you can only get one of the two first, then get it. Don't be afraid about getting this one first before the other one. Uh, you're, you're probably going to want both because they're pretty awesome. Once you've played one with a lot, it's really fun to switch it up and play with the other one. And then the coolest thing is mixing those together. It's like, huh, do I want to play with the rhino or do I want to play with the, not the alligator, but the, um, the lion? You know, do I want to play with the penguin or do I want to play with the chameleon? You know, you, you match up the same numbers that have similar types of things, uh, and, but it gives them, but, but they have a slight difference and that's kind of fun. Uh, the ge overall game is great. It's quick. I will say though, you know, and I may have said this in the other review, it's really best with three or four players. It doesn't really play that well with two. This is not one I do recommend playing two players. It's just not there. You're going back and forth. It's zero sum. Three or four players is where this game shines and where I recommend it. Uh, the animals are awesome. The artwork is awesome. The fact that you can play a base game and just play with all the cards and, and just do, you know, four to, you deal four at a time and you're looking at them and picking one versus I like the advanced variant where you're throwing out four cards, only having eight, but your opponent doesn't know which ones you've thrown out. That's a lot of fun too. And then of course, mixing them together just makes this game amazing. So they're both great. This one's awesome too. Great follow-up. I like that you can play it on its own and I like that you can mix it together. Two thumbs up for me. I highly recommend Beastie Bar, New Beasts in Town. Uh, and because I like it so much, I am keeping it in my collection. So let's induct it properly with a saxophone serenade. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.